In the video on fare increases, we said that one of the important things that airlines have to consider before increasing a fare is what the competitive response will be. So while we looked at demand curves and said that airlines will choose to increase fares that they believe are in the inelastic portion of the demand curve, in addition to that, they also na uh, have to consider whether the other airlines in that market will go along with the increase. Because if they, if air, if the first airline, if airline one increases a fare, and there's one other airline in the market, airline two, and airline two doesn't go along with that increase, then airline one is likely to end up losing money uh, unless they pull that increase back. So in other words, they'd be better off if they didn't increase that fare in the first place if they knew that airline two wasn't going to go along with it. Uh, uh, in the end. So uh, when we had these uh, different scenarios here, we said that both airlines started out with a $100 fare and they were each making $5,000 in revenue. Uh, when airline one increased the fare to $110, airline two, if, if airline two went along with that, they would both be better off uh, making $5,280. Um, and uh, that would have been the optimal point. We said that if airline one went along, excuse me, if airline one increased the fare to 110, airline two didn't go along with the increase, then at least the way we constructed this example, all of the demand would go from airline one to airline two, airline two would get all of the revenue, airline one would be left with nothing. Uh, if airline two was the initiator, airline two would raise the fare to 110. If airline one didn't go along with that increase, then uh, airline two would be uncompetitive and all the demand and all the revenue would go to airline one. So if airline one does not believe that this is going to be the outcome to the fare increase and that they're going to end up right where they started, then they'd be better off not increasing the fare to begin with and, and losing money while this all played out. And we said that a good way of thinking about the interactions between airlines during this process is through game theory. And that's what we're going to talk about in a very broad sense now. I'd like to be able to write down a game theoretic model that explains this behavior, uh, but unfortunately to my knowledge one doesn't exist. Uh, I don't know of anyone who has uh, tried to model the airline pricing interactions with game theory. I think it would be a, a very interesting research project for someone to take on, but at least to my knowledge, it doesn't exist. But that's okay. We can still talk about the concepts. And generally, what, what game theory helps us do is think about why, if, if, airline, if the optimal point is here, why an equilibrium will be at a different point. And we're not gonna we're not gonna go too much into it now. We're not gonna really describe this, but just because no uh no discussion of game theory would be complete without a mention of Nash equilibrium, uh we're gonna see that you know, I think I'm off the screen there, but Nash equilibrium, we're not going to describe that formally, but generally what Nash equilibrium is, is a, an equilibrium point that's not optimal. And game theory helps us understand how airlines reach those e equilibrium points when there is a better solution out there. So we're just going to talk through some of it. We're not going to try to use the math. And that's actually the last we're going to talk about Nash equilibrium. Uh, let's just take a look at this set of strategies. So if we were if we were talking in game theory terms, each one of these prices would be a strategy for each of the airlines. And this is a two participant or two airline game, uh, but it, it could just as well be many carriers, multi participants. And the uh, interaction between these two airlines uh, in, in reality is not a one time thing. It's not just static. Airline two isn't just interacting with airline one for the first time. This is more of what is considered a repeated game. So these two airlines know each other. They have some experience of how they will react to things. And knowing that helps them devise their strategies. 
an airline one would have a different set of strategies knowing that the other competitors airline two or if it was airline three or airline four uh, game theory helps us understand how how airlines use knowledge of different participants in the market in the game to devise their strategies it's not just purely looking at demand curves and deciding what the best outcome is so let's just think about this in terms of if this is the if this is the optimal outcome both airlines increased fares what would be some of the reasons that airline two would not go along with that increase so let's go down here and I've gone ahead and written some of them out just because sometimes it takes me too long to write and type and uh, talk at the same time so the first thing is well they could have different views on elasticity right so we said that airline one chose this market and this fare to increase because the the elasticity was uh, inelastic so uh, el uh, elasticity was inelastic so if they raise the fare it will result in greater revenue for both airlines in the market if both airlines raise the fare well perhaps airline two just doesn't agree with that view on elasticity you know as we said airlines don't really know what the demand curve looks like they're going off of intuition and some some data on how things are moving in the market but it's really their best guess maybe in this case airline one believes that the uh, inelastic the market is inelastic but airline two think it's elastic and a fair increase would lower revenue so that's one reason the next reason is they could just have different pricing strategies maybe airline two is a low fare carrier maybe part of their brand is to have low fares in the market so even when they believe that they could increase fares and increase revenue it's against their brand strategy their pricing strategy and they don't go along with those increases just because it um, it conflicts with the strategy that they are uh, that they've built their business on the third is airline two perhaps airline two doesn't like to follow so this is part of knowing airline personalities and their their typical behavior some airlines don't like to follow fare increases they like to initiate fare increases particularly large carriers dominant carriers they don't want to see um, well they don't want to be the ones to respond to fair actions they like to initiate fair fair actions so perhaps airline two doesn't go along with this increase just because they don't like it that airline one was the one who initiated it and a couple of weeks later they go ahead and initi initiate the fare increase and airline one responds and it sticks at that time that's a possibility the fourth one is that the increase is not broad enough and this is sort of a practical practical consideration we we constructed this example as if there were just one fare that was being considered and one fare being increased in reality that's unlikely to happen um, increases that are or if a fair if an airline attempts to just increase one fare in one market it has fairly fairly little success uh, chance of success uh, most increases most increases there are exceptions to it but most increases will be either at a regional level or a country level or at at some aggregate level where there's a collection of markets that are all increased at the same time and generally by the same amount um, and the reason for that is is because it makes it easy for airlines to respond um, and also makes it easy for airlines to actually know that there's some action in the marketplace and that's reason number five here so in in practicality if if airline one increased one fare in one market it airline two may never even see it so and remember you know airlines airlines can't communicate with each other on pricing actions all an airline can do is initiate a pricing action and wait for a competitor to respond so let's say airline one initiates a fare increase and waits for six hours and no response 12 hours no response 12 24 hours and no response well two things could be happening one could be that airline two has decided not to go along with that increase 
or two, airline two may have never seen the increase to begin with, and their non-response is, is not a, an action that they're deciding not to take an increase, but just a, a passive uh, a response, which means they never saw it, so they're not, they're not making any decision. So uh, bundling fare increases together in something that is easy for competitors to see is part of the strategy of increases. Um, you know, there are many pricing changes happening throughout the day, thousands, and if, if, it's, if it's not easy for competitors to see those fair increases, then um, it's, it's entirely possible that uh, they, they don't get, um, there's no response because they didn't see them in the first place. I remember um, seeing a few years ago an airline was initiating a surcharge. I believe it was a fuel surcharge. And it was a fairly large surcharge. I don't know. Maybe it was, I don't know, I'll just guess. Let's say it was $50. And they took out a press release and announced that they were in basically increasing fares through this surcharge. And the first reaction that, you know, some of, some of the folks that uh, I was with saw this and said, well, well, you know, that's not a very uh, common thing to see that airlines would go and tell people that they're increasing fares. But you have to wonder, maybe they were putting that out there because they wanted their competitors to know that an increase was going on. And the success of that increase depended on the competitors knowing that it was happening and giving them an opportunity to respond.